Supervolcanic eruptions have had some devastating effects on our planet and all those on it. Therefore, experts at NASA are working on some risky strategies to prevent one from happening, since we may be on the brink of one erupting very soon. The Yellowstone supervolcano is a ticking time bomb that could erupt at any moment. The USGS just issued a warning, and the signs are more alarming than ever. Is the world prepared for the catastrophe that could wipe out life as we know it? Stay tuned as we reveal the shocking details and what you need to know to stay safe. The Yellowstone Supervolcano, located beneath the Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, has long been a subject of fascination and concern for scientists and the public alike. This massive volcanic system, one of the largest in the world, has the potential to cause widespread devastation if it were to erupt. Recently, the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, issued a warning that the supervolcano may be overdue for an eruption, sparking renewed interest and anxiety about what this could mean for the planet. Yellowstone's volcanic system is not your average volcano. It is a caldera, a large depression formed after a massive eruption emptied a magma chamber beneath the surface, causing the ground to collapse. The Yellowstone caldera measures about 30 miles by 45 miles, making it one of the largest active volcanic systems in the world. The supervolcano has had three major eruptions in the past 2.1 million years. The Huckleberry Ridge eruption, 2.1 million years ago. This was the largest of the three, with the eruption spewing more than 2,500 times the volume of material than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. The Mesa Falls eruption, 1.3 million years ago. This eruption was less significant, but still massive compared to most volcanic eruptions. The Lava Creek eruption, 640,000 years ago. This eruption created the current Yellowstone caldera and was responsible for releasing enormous amounts of ash and gases into the atmosphere, affecting the global climate. These eruptions have occurred roughly every 600,000 to 800,000 years leading scientists to speculate that the supervolcano might be overdue for another major eruption. The USGS warning. What does it mean? The USGS is responsible for monitoring volcanic activity across the United States, including Yellowstone. Recently, the agency issued a warning suggesting that the Yellowstone supervolcano might be overdue for an eruption. However, it's important to understand that this warning does not mean an eruption is imminent. Instead, it serves as a reminder of the potential hazards posed by the supervolcano and the need for continued monitoring and preparedness. The USGS bases its warning on several factors. As mentioned earlier, the last major eruption occurred approximately 640,000 years ago, leading some to speculate that we are within the time frame for another significant event. Next, Yellowstone is one of the most seismically active areas in the United States, experiencing thousands of small earthquakes each year. While most of these quakes are too small to be felt, they indicate ongoing activity beneath the surface. In addition, the ground in Yellowstone has been observed to rise and fall over time, a phenomenon known as ground deformation. This is caused by the movement of magma beneath the surface and can be an indicator of volcanic activity. And lastly, Yellowstone is famous for its geysers, hot springs, and fumaroles, which are all connected to the underlying volcanic system changes in the behavior of these features could signal changes in the magma chamber. What would happen if Yellowstone erupted? If Yellowstone were to erupt, the immediate effects would be nothing short of apocalyptic. The eruption would begin with the violent ejection of magma, ash, and gases from the caldera, a massive crater formed by past eruptions. The explosive force would send pyroclastic flows fast-moving clouds of hot gas, ash, and volcanic debris, racing across the landscape at hundreds of miles per hour. These flows would devastate everything in their path, obliterating forests, rivers, wildlife, and human settlements within a 50-mile radius of the caldera. The blast would also send a plume of ash and volcanic material high into the stratosphere, reaching altitudes of up to 30 miles. This ash would spread across the United States and beyond, driven by prevailing winds. The ashfall could blanket areas hundreds of miles from Yellowstone, with some regions receiving several feet of ash. This would cause immediate and widespread destruction. Buildings, roads, bridges, and other infrastructure would collapse under the weight of the ash, 
particularly in areas close to the eruption site. Ash can be incredibly heavy, especially when wet, leading to roof collapses and other structural failures. The air would become thick with volcanic ash, making breathing difficult and dangerous. The fine particles in the ash could cause respiratory problems, particularly for those with pre-existing conditions like asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. The ash would also clog engines, disrupt machinery, and make transportation nearly impossible. Ashfall would wreak havoc on agriculture, covering crops and contaminating soil. Farmlands across the Midwest and other regions could be rendered infertile, leading to widespread crop failures and food shortages. Livestock would also be at risk, with grazing animals unable to find uncontaminated food or water. Ash and volcanic debris would contaminate water supplies, clogging rivers, reservoirs, and treatment plants. This could lead to a shortage of clean drinking water, further exacerbating the crisis. The eruption would likely trigger mass evacuations, as people flee the affected areas to escape the ash and pyroclastic flows. The sheer scale of the disaster would overwhelm emergency services, leading to chaos and further loss of life. The immediate devastation of a Yellowstone eruption would be followed by a long and difficult recovery period. The eruption would have far-reaching consequences that could last for years if not decades. The ash and gases ejected into the atmosphere would have a profound impact on the climate. Sulfur dioxide, SO2, in particular, would combine with water vapor to form sulfuric acid aerosols. These aerosols would reflect sunlight away from the Earth, leading to a significant drop in global temperatures, a phenomenon known as volcanic winter. During this period, the Earth's average temperature could drop by several degrees Fahrenheit. This cooling would disrupt weather patterns, leading to colder winters, shorter growing seasons, and widespread crop failures. The resulting food shortages could trigger famines, particularly in regions already vulnerable to food insecurity. The economic consequences of a Yellowstone eruption would be staggering. The immediate destruction of infrastructure, agriculture, and industry in the United States would have ripple effects across the global economy. Supply chains would be disrupted, leading to shortages of goods and services. The costs of rebuilding would be astronomical, putting a strain on national and global resources. Financial markets would likely react with panic, leading to a collapse in stock prices and a global recession. Insurance companies would face massive claims, and governments would be forced to allocate significant resources to disaster relief and recovery efforts. The combination of food shortages, economic collapse, and environmental devastation would lead to a humanitarian crisis on an unprecedented scale. Millions of people could be displaced, both within the United States and internationally. In fact, the Yellowstone supervolcano is also referred to as the Yellowstone caldera. An eruption resulting in the formation of a caldera would pose a significant natural hazard in Yellowstone. Scientists estimate that the last Yellowstone eruption was 1,000 times more potent than the well-known 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, which claimed 56 lives and devastated hundreds of square kilometers of land in Washington and Oregon. Thousands of years ago, the most recent Yellowstone supervolcano erupted and ejected a deadly column of hot ash, molten rock, and lethal gases several kilometers into the atmosphere. A third of the continent was likely plunged into darkness. Fast-moving currents of hot, dry rock fragments and gases, known as pyroclastic flows, raced through the region at alarming speeds, burying or destroying anything in their path. Magma spewing from the ground charred the once picturesque landscape for kilometers. Remnants of the last eruption can still be observed within the Yellowstone caldera, which measures 50 kilometers, 30 miles wide, and 70 kilometers, 45 miles long. The dense volcanic debris that remained after the eruption can still be seen in an area known as the Lava Creek Tuff. The most recent super eruption was not a massive explosion, but a series of eruptions expelling volcanic material. The event formed the Yellowstone Caldera, now 30 by 45 miles in size. The Yellowstone supervolcano remains active today, with ongoing geothermal activity and seismicity indicating its continued potential for future eruptions. But what if it erupts again? If the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt, 
it could result in catastrophic consequences. Initially, the eruption might cause the immediate deaths of over 100,000 people in the death zone. The heat emanating from deep within the Earth's core would cause the molten rock just beneath the Earth's surface to start melting, resulting in a combination of magma, rocks, vapor, carbon dioxide, and other gases. Over thousands of years, the accumulating mixture would rise, exerting pressure that would eventually elevate the ground into a dome shape and form cracks along the edges. As the pressure was relieved through these cracks, the dissolved gases would erupt, rapidly emptying the magma across the park. Volcanic ash and debris would be propelled several miles into the atmosphere, reaching heights greater than Mount Everest. A molten ash layer, around 10 feet thick, would extend up to 1,000 miles from the park, covering most of the Rocky Mountains and the Midwest, and stretching into the Pacific Northwest and Southern Canada. This dense and extensive ash would spare no life or structure within its range, leading to significant lahar flows and burying everything it reaches. Rescuers might have difficulty accessing the area because the ash blocks all entry points from the ground. Additionally, the ash and gases spreading into the atmosphere would likely disrupt most air travel, similar to the impact of a smaller volcano eruption in Iceland in 2010. The consequences following such an eruption extend well beyond the loss of human life. The large amount of ash expelled into the atmosphere would significantly affect air travel, affect air communication systems, and the overall infrastructure of the United States and parts of Canada. Globally, the aftermath would involve a layer of ash traveling across continents, reaching the UK within five days. This ash cloud, possibly ascending 25 miles high, would seriously affect air quality, leading to respiratory problems and health issues worldwide. The ash would also blanket the soil, disrupt machinery, and significantly impact food supplies by harming crops, resulting in substantial price hikes and a potential famine. The ash cloud could also be a barrier, blocking sunlight and decreasing global temperatures by 3 to 5 degrees Celsius. This substantial decrease could result in a regional or global volcanic winter, causing long-term changes in weather patterns. Crucial for maintaining the balance of our ecosystem, plant life would encounter a catastrophic hurdle. The thick layer of volcanic ash blocking sunlight would impede the process of photosynthesis and result in widespread plant mortality. This could lead to failures in worldwide crop production, disrupting the food chain and impacting species far from the initial eruption area. Water bodies would also be affected. Ash and other volcanic materials would enter rivers and lakes, impacting water quality and aquatic life. The sudden introduction of these materials could suffocate fish and other marine organisms, destabilizing freshwater ecosystems. The eruption of Pinatubo in 1991 caused the planet to cool by approximately 1 degree sas, 1.8 degree sas, for several years. The eruption of Tambora in 1815 caused enough cooling to harm crops globally, potentially causing famines in certain regions. These were relatively small eruptions compared to the potential capabilities of a supervolcano. Could a Yellowstone supereruption lead to an extinction-level event? The idea of such a catastrophic incident is disturbing, but a supervolcanic eruption at Yellowstone is not considered an extinction-level event, ELE. Even though such an eruption would have devastating outcomes with substantial local and possibly worldwide impacts, it would not lead to a mass extinction event or indicate the annihilation of the human species. Given the intricacy and seriousness of the potential eruption of the Yellowstone caldera, it is vital to comprehend its far-reaching implications. This geological occurrence possesses the power to significantly change life on our planet. Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, oversees monitoring systems at Yellowstone. These systems observe seismic activity, ground deformation, and volcanic emissions to identify any indications of heightened volcanic activity in the Yellowstone region. This allows for timely monitoring and assessment of potential hazards, aiding in better comprehension and preparation for potential volcanic incidents. When is it expected to erupt again? Scientific knowledge assures us 
that although Yellowstone has not erupted in many thousands of years, the chances of such an event are slim. The underground magma chamber at Yellowstone consists mainly of solid rock, with only 5 to 15 percent in a molten state, indicating that there may not be enough magma to support another catastrophic supereruption. Experts clarify the misconception that Yellowstone is overdue for an eruption by emphasizing that volcanoes do not operate on fixed schedules and erupt when specific magma supply and pressure conditions are met. The USGS has indicated that it is very likely that Yellowstone will not experience an eruption for the next several centuries. The main hazards are expected to be ongoing geysers, earthquakes, and ground uplift. According to Lowenstern, Earth will experience super-eruptions in the future, and it's uncertain whether they will occur in Yellowstone. He also states that Yellowstone has already had a long lifespan and may not have another eruption. Volcanoes eventually die out, and the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone is influenced by the heat from below and the relative cold from the surface. If less heat enters from below, the chamber could freeze and become a solid granite body. It's important to note that the volcanic hotspot beneath Yellowstone is gradually moving to the northeast, or more precisely, the North American tectonic plate above the hotspot is moving southwest. Thanks a lot for tuning in. If you like this video and want to see more similar content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, share your thoughts in the comments section below.